Hi everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So yeah, just finished uh, doing my uh, monthly update. So just put this back in the frame to uh, carry on stitching. Yeah, and so I'll show you where we are in the pattern. We are working right up to the uh, edge of the pillars there on the right hand side and we're getting close to the bottom. I did a whole bunch of stitching of this bigger blocks of color here so I didn't quite stick to the diagonal uh, direction in this uh, area. I uh, am sort of filling it in and then the pillars are going to be stitched more vertically. That's just the way the colors go so I am not strict with my method. I generally go diagonally but when it makes sense to go in another direction then that is what I do. So yeah. And actually in my latest update post, I also showed all the projects I have planned, a whole bunch of them. <laughs> It'll keep me busy for quite a while. Yeah, and we are closing in on 85% done here. So I'm pretty excited about that. We are on track to finish by the end of the year. Yeah, and I, I got another few zeros over the last week, three or four of them. Oh, come on, this pin stitch does not want to be cooperative this time. I don't know why. There we go. Must have been like slightly thicker there or something with the cloth. I don't know. <clears throat> So yeah, we are into fall now. Yeah, I finished uh, when I preserved all the apple juice about a month ago. But then um, there's always a few straggler uh, apples left on the tree. Some are at the very top where I just couldn't uh, couldn't reach them and they wouldn't be shaken down. Now that they've uh, ripened a bit more, yeah, they're, they're falling down. So I got those and then um, I... Uh, I had some on the lower branches. I think what happened was um, after I picked the apples, these were like the tiny little baby ones that hadn't really done anything. And um, I think once I picked most of the apples, that gave the uh, tree more energy to put towards those ones. So they suddenly grew. So I had a little bunch of like six of them near the bottom of my tree. And I know I didn't miss it. So yeah, I think that's what happened was... <clears throat> the tree suddenly had energy to put into those little apples and so they they grew so yeah I got a couple dozen of them so I'm gonna make a some applesauce and actually one of my friends gave me a really good idea saying if I freeze them in uh, popsicle makers then you get a nice uh, healthy snack for later which is like yeah that's a good idea that sounds really good and I do have already some popsicle trays because I used to make them for my son when he was littler. We actually made um, frozen yogurt ones too. Got some from the store that was like on clearance because it was about to go to expire, but it hadn't yet. So yeah, freezing it into uh, little popsicles was a perfect way to use it up. Oop. Not trying to frog stitches there, yeah. So yeah, I did most of the big blocks off camera, but yeah, I managed to make quite a bit of uh, progress. That made me pretty happy. Yeah, I was sort of doing more confetti going down the diagonal and then doing uh, the bigger the bigger blocks on the side, sort of alternating back and forth. That way I wasn't closing anything in and yeah, kept the confetti from feeling too bogged down and the uh, big areas of color from being uh, too boring. So yeah, got my little system quite happy with how it works out, so.
yeah, I say that my stitching is about the uh, the process and not the uh, the finished product, but I mean, getting closer to an end is pretty darn exciting, I have to say. I definitely love that part of it. Yeah, I know there's some people who have lots of rotation, so they like, they haven't finished anything. They're not sure if they ever will, but they love the process so much. And I'm going, yeah, I love the process too, but I do want to have a finished project. Those are nice too. As I'm slowly uh, covering up all the walls in my house. <laughs> in fact, I said what I'm going to probably have to do is get um, one of those digital picture frames and put all our family pictures in it so that I can take some of the uh, physical framed pictures down and have the wall space for my uh, my cross stitch. <laughs> mm. oh, I remember in a group one lady was saying that she um, rotates through hers what's displayed and what isn't because she has so many projects and not enough wall space which yeah that's understandable. There are just too many beautiful ones to do. So far, I have refrained from buying any more um, patterns, but you never know. <laughs> I keep telling myself, though, I've got plenty. But yeah, when the uh, Thomas Kincaid ones came out, I had to get a couple because uh, I just feared, what if it gets retired? Because... Uh, yeah, sometimes um, artists decide they no longer want to um, to do the licensing, and uh, occasionally there is no warning. And so if you didn't buy it while it was available, you're out of luck. You, you can hope if you can find a hard copy somewhere. That's the only way they're allowed to be resold. They can't resell the electronic copies. And, uh, well, I am spoiled now. By, by stitching with a tablet, I would never want to go back to uh, stitching with paper. Even if I really loved the pattern, I'm not sure I'd be willing to go back. <laughs> I know that there is a way that you can um, use the camera on your tablet to sort of upload it so that you can still mark off the stitches, but the certain the searchability feature, that's the that's the biggest selling point of the Pattern Keeper is it automatically highlighting the stitches for you so that you don't have to manually search for them. That was what always was my problem on papers. You always miss one. Oh, and it's just so frustrating. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be Canadian Thanksgiving soon. One of my Canadian friends posted about it on Facebook, and I was like, wait, really? I said, I don't know how it always seems to sneak up on me every year. I mean, I should know when it is, and yet <laughs> it always seems to catch me by surprise. I'll be making my, my shopping list and suddenly go, oh, wait a minute, I got to buy, you know, cranberry sauce and, uh, and stuffing and <laughs> the things I only make for the big occasions for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter. Yeah, I'm not a stuffing person, but my husband and son, they love it. I don't actually make, like, stuffing, real stuffing, because for one, I don't, I don't cook a turkey. And, uh, I don't know how. I mean, I've never made it by, from scratch, and it's, they love the stove top, so... Why not? It's funny, though, because my son, he's very particular about um, 
textures. He does not generally like mushy textures, so he'll be happy to eat raw vegetable. He will not eat the same vegetable cooked in a soup because he doesn't like it. He likes it to be crunchy and stuff. I'm like, okay, and then you'll eat stuffing, which is like mushy bread. I don't get it. <laughs> oh dear. But uh, I guess we all have our quirks, right? Oh, oh, my goodness, pardon me. <clears throat> yeah, the days are definitely getting shorter and the leaves are all changing by the day. <laughs> yeah, I had to get used to that when we moved out to the prairies because I lived in um, Vancouver Island in the lower mainland where summer is much longer and the leaves take a much longer time to turn. And then here it's like end of August, they start changing, not mid-October like they did where I grew up. So yeah, for us by mid-October, <coughs> pretty much all the leaves are down. So, but yeah, still going on my uh, walks outside and there's a whole bunch of uh, trees around the uh, the lake that I like to uh, take a lap around on my uh, on my walk and yeah by the day the hair are changing it's pretty neat actually but yeah you can see I'm getting down to like there's only 21 left of this color and yeah we are starting to zero stuff out that's one of my favorite parts too when you're getting to the end and you get to to end finish completely with a color and pack it away that's fun also means I have fewer to sort through in my uh, envelopes so that makes it go a little faster too yeah I had people asking you know, how do you stitch so fast and it's like well these little things add up my switching from bobbin so that I'm no longer rewinding the uh, the thread back onto it when I'm done with a color uh, stitching multiple colors at once uh, using the app because um, I no longer have to manually search and also when I was using highlighters I was paranoid about getting highlighter on my actual stitching so I would always have to push my floor stand away um, before I, I use the highlighter and then pull it back, which doesn't take long. But I mean, if you're doing that, you know, several, you know, 50, 40, you know, times a session or something, then, you know, that does add up. And uh, so, yeah, there's that. Uh, no longer turning my work uh, to end my threads. That definitely makes a big difference. Goes much faster. So, yeah, all these little things add up over time. Oh, also my using multiple needles so I'm not constantly changing, rethreading. Also uh, does helps with that too, with speed as well. Kind of ended up with two threads close together, but this uh, there's a lot of this color, so that's fine. It will get used up. Yeah, and then in a few weeks it'll be time change, just enough to mess up our sleep and. Oh, I hate it because then um, 
it feels like the sun goes down earlier. I know it doesn't actually, but because of the timing. I'll be cooking dinner and it's like totally dark outside. It's just ugh, kind of depressing. I get the winter blues, so that definitely doesn't help. And it throws everything off. You know, people say, oh, extra hour to sleep, but uh, I j it just messes things up for me. You get hungry at the wrong time and you wake up at the wrong times. And nah. I really wish we could just be consistent, to be honest. You know, they tell you to try and keep a regular sleep schedule, but then every, you know, twice a year they're changing it, so. <laughs> uh, so much for that. Yeah, you'll hear me rant a, a lot about time change on this, ch this channel. I am not a fan. We had a provincial vote, I think, last year. And, uh... It was very, very close. So, um, but they decided to keep it. So, uh, what you gonna do? <laughs> Accidentally registered as a, uh, me trying to resize that when I wasn't actually trying to. So I went and got a, a pumpkin for Halloween, even though it's early. And uh, we're storing it in the garage, which is uh, it's heated, but not very much. It's pretty cool. So it's a consistent temperature. So hopefully that means it won't rot. Because, <laughs> yeah, the problem is the stores, um, they store them outside. And our temperature goes above and below freezing. And then the pumpkins freeze and thaw repeatedly and then yeah they just turn into complete mush so <laughs> I remember when I was a kid we had um this section of street they call like the shady mile which was like it was lots of trees sort of closing in and there weren't many houses you could see it was kind of spooky and uh, it was really cool because um, after Halloween, I'm going to do these out of order. So you'll see me uh, breaking my guidelines here. Anyway, um, people would put their, um, their jack-o'-lanterns out on the fence posts right after Halloween. So that was kind of cool to uh, drive down there and see them all. Of threads here but we're good managed to keep from getting too tangled yeah pretty much done most of that blocks of color and I'm back to uh, back to confetti although the uh, the pillars goes a little faster as it tends to be almost like stripes there is of course some shading but yeah I find the pillars always go pretty quickly 
Oh, I figured out what was making my table squeak last time. The, um, the little bar that braces the legs apart on this one, it was, uh, in the wrong place. So it was kind of loose. And, uh, yeah, whenever I put my elbow near the pillows where it rests, it was, uh, shifting around and squeaking. And uh, when I edited the video, I discovered it actually didn't sound very bad on the video. You couldn't really hear it. So I'm glad. Hopefully that means it didn't annoy you all too much. But yeah, it was annoying the heck out of me. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm one of those people who can hear every little sound. That's why I was interesting. You know, people were complaining about how it's so much harder to hear dialogue in um, movies and TV nowadays. And of course, everyone's like, well, it's your hearing, it's your hearing. I'm like, no, no, my hearing is fine. You know, I can still hear every little sound that other people can't hear. I'm always the person who says, what is that noise? And everyone's like, what noise? You know, <laughs> and um, no, actually, I was reading an article. They were saying that, no, there really is a difference. They, um, in the industry, they, um, they don't give sound engineers sort of the um, the room to get to capture the audio properly and things are not always overdubbed and people sort of get used to saying their lines so much that they don't realize that, okay, it's the 30th take, you know, you know those inside and out, but the viewer is only going to see this for the first time on this take and so yeah, they're just kind of mumbling through it and... Uh, And yeah, so that's why I don't watch anything without subtitles now. But I said I do notice a distinct difference between older stuff that was made in the 80s and 90s versus today. And I think, I don't know, this could just be speculation on my part, but I think more actors used to get their start in theater than they do nowadays. You can tell who learned in the theater and who didn't. Because like I said, Patrick Stewart, you know, he was a Shakespearean actor. And I said, you know, watching Star Trek, like, I never had any difficulty figuring out what he was saying, even when he was speaking quietly. You could still understand him because he knows how to enunciate. And uh, same, they said, uh, Avery Brooks, who played Cisco in Deep Space Nine, again, stage actor, amazing presence. And uh, yeah, he was nice and clear when he talked. Uh, the actor who plays Stamets on Discovery, I had someone who said he overacts. I said, no, I don't. He doesn't come across that way to me at all. And and I said, and in a sea of actors who mumble through their lines, I love the fact that he actually knows how to project. He knows how to enunciate. I never have to go, wait, what did he say? Like I do with other characters. So yeah, I kind of wish all actors did some stage training because it, it does make a difference. Yeah. And it was interesting too, because the article is reading saying that actually sound mixing is different from what it used to be that um like they said um director christopher nolan people were complaining in the theaters they couldn't understand what his characters were saying and that he seems to almost do it on purpose the music score is up so high and people aren't speaking clearly and you can't understand what they're saying and it's frustrating as heck and same with lighting like they make things so dark nowadays you can't see what's happening unless you like change the contrast on your tv and i said like you look at older stuff like i said when they did lord of the rings you could still see you know the uh, the action even when it was a night battle scene you could still see it and now i hate that you just i'm watching and it feels like i'm watching practically a black screen and hearing you know people fighting or whatever and it's a battle scene and not knowing what happened because i can't bloody see it you know <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's so frustrating i heard also that they tend to mix the sounds for the theater and not what it's going to sound like on somebody's tv so there's a difference there too but i just i really wish that they could figure out a way to balance it Yeah, so they said, it's not your imagination, you know, if if it seems like the sound is getting worse, it, it, it actually is. <laughs> oh, broke my phone.
thumbnail there. A little flake coming off. I just trimmed them yesterday, so I guess they were brittle. Yeah, I find a lot of times in TV movies especially, they're really bad for having constant background music. And sometimes it's quite loud. So you're trying to hear a line and the music's going like, dum, 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 in the background. It's like, come on, guys. That's just really distracting. <laughs> I actually stopped watching more than one movie because the, movie, the sound was so plinky plunky. Oh, is irritating me so much. <laughs> Don't tick me off, okay? Or yeah, there was one that came out recently on CBC. It's called The North Water, I believe. And Colin Farrell's in it. And they actually filmed it up near the Arctic Circle. And, uh, you know, I like historical dramas and thought, wow, this is going to be so cool. I couldn't watch it. Uh, there was one actor who didn't mumble his lines. That was it. Everybody else was mumble, mumble. And I like to stitch. In front of the TV. I have my subtitles on so I can glance up every now and then if I miss a word or two. But this was like watching a foreign language film. You know, this was, I was going to have to sit there and read every single caption, which means I wouldn't be able to stitch. And I'm just like, you know what? No, I'm too annoyed. I cannot be bothered. So it's a shame because it looked like it was pretty good production value, but yeah, I don't have the patience for that anymore. <laughs> I mean, I suppose I could have knit, but I really wanted to stitch. So, yeah, after 10 minutes, I just gave up because. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I have watched some foreign language stuff before, but it's generally not my preferred because I like to be doing more than one thing. I did watch one once when I was visiting my uh, my husband's family. Uh, she had a uh, a Japanese like telenovela. It was actually really good. I can't remember what it was called now, but um, yeah, I I really enjoyed it, but. Uh, Yeah, I had to uh, knit <laughs> a boring part of my sweater that was just plain knitting to watch it. So, yeah, like, I got absolutely nothing against foreign language stuff. It's just my problem is I don't like to just watch while I'm watching. And if I have to be sitting there, then it's basically like reading a book, which I can only do, you know, one thing at a time when I do that. So, yeah. Whereas I get older, the more um, <laughs> the more stimulation, mental stimulation I need. I rarely do one thing at a time anymore. You know, if I'm cooking, there's a podcast or music on. If I'm walking, I'm listening to an audio book. Yeah. If I'm in front of the TV, I'm stitching. That's why I don't get as much read now. The only time I actually really sit down and read is before I go to sleep. And then I have usually a sound video, relaxation video going on, like, you know, rain or waves or whatever on my headphones to sort of help me wind down while I'm reading. And that's pretty much the only time I am just, just reading. So, but I mean, I say just reading, but I mean, I'm listening to a video too, so I'm not actually just reading. <laughs> but that's because I'm trying to uh, wind down and go to sleep, so... Yeah, so I used to read so much more. I used to read at least three books a week, but now I'm like a one book a week person, so yeah. Okay.
Yeah, I swear. After summer, the rest of the year always seems to really just fly by. You know, next thing I know, it's um, Canadian Thanksgiving, and then it's Halloween, and then it's Christmas everywhere. <laughs> and then it's the end of the year. New Year is late. Yeah, January, February... Well, waiting until spring, that seems to drag. And summer's kind of medium, and then yeah, after that, everything seems to go pretty fast, so. It's funny how our perception of time changes. I mean, it's really the same amount of time, right? But, yeah. Oh yeah, the uh, the show um, Hudson and Rex came back, and I have to wait to watch it because my kid likes it. That's um, it's a Canadian show um, about a, uh, a detective and his uh, his uh, dog is the part Rex. His uh, dog is the partner who, of course, helps to solve the crimes. Usually, either rescues him or finds the uh, the the critical clue that cracks the case open so yeah of course my son likes dogs so he absolutely loves that yeah the, it's a big german shepherd and uh like there was one episode where guy somebody poisoned some chocolates and left them outside of his door and he was about to eat them and the dog growls and you know grabs at the box and the guy says hey get your own chocolate you know and then the detective checks and discovers that actually they're they've been tampered with and yeah, and the dog smelled the, whatever the poison was, you know, that, that's kind of how, so it's, yeah, it's kind of a, it's not very realistic, but it's all in good fun, and um, it's funny, though, because it's filmed and set in uh, St. John's, Newfoundland, and nobody's got a Newfie accent, <laughs> like, how does that work, come on, Ooh. I mean, it would be like having something said in Texas and nobody has a Texas accent, right? Or whatever, like, oh dear. But I think, like, oh, I think it's in its fifth season now. And I think there was, like, one episode where there was one guest star who had, um, who had a Newfie accent. Oh, darn it. And just there. I hate how easy it is to pull the ends up to the right side and then trying to get them go to go back to the the back of the piece where they belong is just such a pain. Yeah, it's funny though, because it's a Canadian show. There's a lot fewer Canadian actors, so Basically, every guest star that I've seen, I've seen somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. They had um, the guy who plays, um, oh, what's his name? Inspector Brackenreed on um, Murdoch Mysteries was on there as a, a sheep farmer. <laughs> yeah, and I think... That's partly why I recognize voices on characters too, because I'm not always looking at the screen. I'm stitching or whatever. And uh, so, yeah, I'll often recognize voices before I recognize faces. And then I'll, yeah, so I, I heard him talk and I immediately said, is that Bracken Reed? And I looked up, oh yeah, it is him. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, I think we are sort of right on the edge here. So I think what I'm going to actually do I'm going to put all these aside for now and I'm going to carry on down the diagonal. And then come back to the top. So I'm sort of going a bit more diagonally, although of course I'm stopping sort of right where the pillar is, but yeah. This way I'm not trying to wrangle so many threads at once. Okay. Three, three, two, eight. 
Okay, I may be doing some out of order too on this color, the way it's kind of scattered around. There's not a lot of stitches of it, but yeah, we shall see what I decide to do. Every now and then I jump around instead of being methodical. So once I'm done my stitch with me here, I'll make some applesauce. Yum, yum. thread is going to run out pretty soon. Yeah, so as I said before, I was going to watch Sanditon. I have to say it's well done, but well, the ending is not of the first season was not what you expected. And um, they said, oh, well, you know, it's more realistic. And I'm going, okay, but Jane Austen's stuff always had happy endings, you know, and I know it was an unfinished novel that they they sort of took her setup and went with it but I know it's not realistic but I mean sometimes you don't want your fiction to be realistic right sometimes you want it as escapism so yeah so I've just started the second season so we'll see where they go with it there's going to be a third one after that too so but yeah basically um like i said it's got darker themes and it's racier than her um her usual stuff because of course it was somebody else's interpretation of where she was going to go with it and yeah the ending didn't go where i thought it would so so be warned <laughs> Yeah, if you if you must have your happy ending, you might not want to watch. Uh, your happily ever after, you might not want to watch it. my hand into the frame there. <laughs>
Nice bright pop of red here. <laughs> yeah, you can see this was one that was uh, wound onto a bobbin, so it's got kinks in it still. Switched it to an envelope, but it sat on that bobbin for years, so yeah, one of the reasons I don't use them anymore. The kinks in the thread make cause more knotting, I find. And like I said, then I was wasting time winding onto bobbins and then unwinding and then rewinding the leftover thread. And that was time I would just rather be stitching. Oh yeah, so it came up in my Facebook memories. It's now been a year since I gave up coffee. So I said, yeah, I'm glad I did it. I uh, don't have stomach pain anymore. And I also rarely have the um, mid-afternoon energy crash where I used to be barely able to keep my eyes open. I'll sometimes have a bit of a dip in energy levels at that time, especially if I didn't sleep well the night before, but not, not the just, you felt like you ran into a wall <laughs> exhaustion that I used to have. So yeah, definitely worth it. And I guess saved a bit of money too. Over time. I mean, not a lot because I rarely bought my coffee from like an actual coffee place. I just made myself. So, but, uh, yeah. Okay. So this one is, I think going to mess with my order a bit. Yeah. Okay. happens. I held the two ends together, but one end threaded and the other one did not. There. Being a pain. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Trying to keep my threads separate there. There we go. Four
trying to add quite a few uh, new threads here, so that slows me down a bit. So far, we're managing to stay in order. If we don't, that's not the end of the world. I've broken my guidelines before. Well, we've done a hundred and now a hundred one. Okay, so, yeah. So I don't want to cross back and forth a bunch here and use up extra thread. I am going to do one of these out of order. So, <clears throat> I'm going to do this one and then this one here, which is kind of out of the diagonal, but it's so close. So... <clears throat> So I did 
those two. I'm going to do this one. And then I'm going to park it again. Now we're switching from orange flowers to the white and light blue. As we head on down this diagonal here. <clears throat> Okay, so I think I'm going to take a break pretty soon so that I can deal with those apples like I said I was going <laughs> to. Yeah. Not as much done this session, but it was very confetti heavy sessions or section of the pattern. So, yeah, not surprising that it slowed me down a bit. We will not end on a round number this time. I like to, but sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. So, uh, as usual, uh, thanks for joining me today, and hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks, everyone. Bye!